You know what this is? It's called a kaffir. Here's one for South Carolina. This one's for Montana. And my home state of New Jersey. Every state is required to produce one each year. And while these reports don't exactly make for the most engaging reading experience, if you wanted to know the fiscal health of your state, you had to look here. Until now. We've taken key numbers from all these reports and created a tool that allows you to get a snapshot of your state's fiscal condition. Now you can check the fiscal health of your state and see how it ranks relative to others without having to deal with this. So how do the rankings work? By focusing on a few common indicators, we can get a quick and intuitive read on a state's fiscal health. Since all states report the same numbers, we can see what the U.S. average is for each indicator. Each state's ranking is based on how far above or below the U.S. average it is. It's like grading on a curve. It doesn't mean that Alaska is doing everything right or that New Jersey is doing everything wrong. But the metrics behind the rankings are like the vitals of a state's fiscal health. They can point us to deeper issues. Our headline ranking is comprised of five dimensions. Cash solvency measures whether a state has enough cash on hand to pay its current bills. In other words, can the state keep the lights on? Good news, most states are doing fine here. Budget solvency measures whether a state can pay its bills over the fiscal year. Alaska had a huge budget surplus in 2013, while New Jersey didn't have enough revenue to cover expenses. Long-run solvency measures the ability of states to pay bills that will come due years into the future, like outstanding bonds. Nebraska has plenty of assets to cover long-term liabilities, while New Jersey does not. Next, we have trust fund solvency, which checks on how well states are funding other long-term liabilities, like pensions. Take Ohio. It does pretty well in the overall rankings, but here they drop to the bottom. Unfunded pensions amount to over half of state personal income. Why does that matter? These pensions are legally guaranteed, like bonds. Eventually, Ohioans will have to pay for them one way or the other. Such a large shortfall will put a lot of stress on their budget. The most subjective dimension of the index is service level solvency, which tries to capture how much slack a state has to raise taxes or increase spending. If a crisis came along, could a state raise revenue quickly? We measure this by comparing taxes, revenues, and expenditures to state personal income. On this dimension, Alaska is once again on the bottom. It has a lot of money coming in, but from one source, oil. If the price of oil drops, as it did recently, Alaska is not in a good position to make up that money elsewhere. That's bad news for service level solvency and the long-term health of the state. So those are the five dimensions each state is scored on. To get the overall ranking, each dimension is given a weight and totaled up. Keep in mind that while comparing states is always fun, the real value is getting a quick readout of your own state's fiscal health. And as states continue releasing these reports, we'll update the index each year so that you can see how your state is doing over time. To see how your state ranks and to learn more about the data and methodology, visit Mercatus.org.